I think, you know, it is twice as hard to attract someone to come to on reserve to be a physician because number one, they don't have the understanding of our people, first of all. Um, there's a lot of historical things that have gone on, historical trauma through residential schools, which is just coming out. And I see that through, you know, people who are my age, who are first generation survivors of all of that, right? A lot of people have, you know, problems with, like I said, substance abuse, drug abuse. Um, there's a lot of depression, there's a lot of uh, mental health things going on, which we don't have good resources for, number one. Uh, number two would be the cultural sensitivity part. People don't understand that, you know, the dynamics of, you know, just even family ties, right? There's a lot of grandparents raising grandchildren. And that's, you know, just a part of wanting to keep children within the community and with their families, right? People don't understand that. Um, the, just culturally, there have a lot of people who use traditional medicine to help with physical ailments still. And they're still trying to figure out how they bridge that with traditional medicine, with pills and all the stuff that they're given, right? I think you have to be open to, you know, other forms of medicine, which I try to let my patients know that that's, you know, I try to let encourage them to seek other options if they're not happy with the way, you know, Western medicine is treating them. Um, the other thing would be just on reserve daily goings would be the thing because we talked about the public health issues and that plays a lot into how your clinic runs right you have to be flexible in running your clinic because some days i will get three people showing up and then other days everybody will show up so it kind of the weather determines that uh, what's going on in the community determines that if there's a death in the community that determines how well my clinic's going to be run um, you know sometimes just days people get paid no one shows up right so you need to have someone who's flexible in that and a lot of times people do medicine and it's more income based too right so a lot of people don't want to take that um, income garnish because of what's going around so I think that that plays a lot into that um, the other thing too is you know the follow-up for my patients is very difficult to get. So if you are very strict on how you practice medicine, you do this every three months, you do this every six months, you get people to come back, it doesn't work that way here. I catch people when they're here, right? I might not see them for a year. I might not see them for six months. So I do all that I can to help them at that time. The other thing too is I get people dropped off on my doorstep who should be at the emergency room and I deal with them here, right? Because this is where they came, like allergic reactions come here, overdoses have come here, um, you know, lacerations and stuff like that. So I do do my best to treat them while we're waiting for like the EMS to come here. So the unpredictability of it, you know, you have to be flexible. You have to be ready to, to accept what gets put on your doorstep. And like I said, if you're the type of person who likes to follow those rigid guidelines and stuff like that, it does not work for my population.